last minute shakeup at 5.30 a.m., laundry situation not good. And when your focus is on helping your clients, it's easy to forget about yourself. But NASM knows trainers. Morning, Ryan. It's okay. And staying in front of the day isn't always nice as drive. simple as one, two, three. So when the unexpected has you pressing pause. What's the latest on creatine? I'm going to get back to you on that. Let NASM One help you press play. Visit nasm.org to sign up for a membership today. You're listening to Random Fit with hosts Wendy Batts and Ken Miller, winner of a Gold Markham Award for Digital Media. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Random Fit. I am Wendy Batts here with my friend and co-host, as always, Ken Miller. Ken, how are you? I am good, Wendy. How you doing? I am doing very well. And today's topic, we're talking about lifting your way to better bone health. So we are going to be um, talking about osteoporosis, what it is, and ways to help and we can't say prevent it because sometimes it is a genetic thing, but we are going to talk about ways to hopefully help slow it down if you um, are a candidate for osteoporosis. So, Ken, I know you also have some clients um, and have dealt with this uh, with people that have walked through your doors as well. So do you want to kick it off? Well, yeah, I mean, as far as my own personal, well, not my personal experience, but as a trainer, as a strength coach, I've uh, just recently had a client who, whose aunt has uh, been diagnosed with uh, advanced osteoporosis. So she's she's got the brittle bone disease to where it's um, uh, something that she had to get medical intervention for. I mean, that's an extreme case. But I've had, you know, clients in the past who who've had relatives, and this is the reason why I bring up relatives is because they're actually almost a signature for what your DNA may hold for you if you're a female client, especially. But I've had clients and friends who've had mothers and aunts who've actually broken their femur. I mean, specifically the femur um, after a fall. And in, in a couple situations, it's it's where their femur broke. They took a step, the femur broke, and then they fell. Right. So there are some cases to where you you need to look at your family history on this one uh, to look at, OK, what's your potential for for having osteoporosis? Because it is a big concern, especially if you are an older female. So when I say older, above the age of 50. But if you have situations where the bone density is in question, uh, you, you want to get this checked out. But let's talk about osteoporosis first <laughs> before we get into the doom and gloom of it all. Because uh, it's not all doom and gloom, right? As you'll find out with what Wendy and I have to talk about on this episode of Random Fit. But basically, it's osteoporosis is, is I guess, the, easy way to, the easiest way to say it is that what we're talking about is a weakening of the bones. So as we grow, as as we grow, uh, both male and female, where we, we're growing up, we're developing, and as we get in from adolescence into adulthood, and then of course into advanced aging, the the bone growth process has takes different stages. So when we talk about the the growth of uh, bone development, first of all, what we are talking about with bone density is the process of resorption and formation. So as we're growing up, we're actually, our bones are breaking down, but they're also building up. So as we're adolescent and into the teens, what's happening is that we're actually building up faster than we're breaking down. So it's a constant formation and reformation, uh, breakdown and a rebuild of bones to where as, we get into the late teens and especially, and this kind of hits home for me because I have a daughter who's in her early teens. And from that perspective, one of the big things for us is just to make sure that she has the tools that she needs to build the biggest or the, the thickest, the densest bones that she can from now till through her teens and into her early twenties, because this is the biggest opportunity for her to build up her bone density. Now, what happens here is that 
and why we have this episode of lifting your way to better bone health is the fact that you can only lift your way so much to where you're going to have the densest buildup of bones through the teens and into your early 20s. And after that, that's when the the slope starts to go downward. But what we are talking about today is how do we prevent that decrease of bone density as we grow older? So, Wendy, you're you're a female and you were very active. What did you do as a young one to build your bone density, or how did you stay fit enough to? When we talk about osteoporosis, what did what in retrospect, what did you do? to help your case when it comes to bone density? You know what? I think most of it was I, my parents. I mean, I always, I grew up on whole milk. I know people are like, oh, gross, that sounds disgusting. But, you know, they were really big into, you know, drinking whole milk. I took uh, vitamin D as, as, a, as a kid. I still do today. I don't know if you do, Ken, but I take calcium. I take vitamin D, of course, you know, obviously being active. And we're going to talk about the importance of that. Um, to, you know, lifting weights, doing, doing activities, anything that's going to try to help, um, like you said, you know, kind of rebuild and, and formate or uh, do the formation of the bone. And so, like you said, when I was looking through and reading the statistics, it's like, wow, okay, you develop the most mass when you're in your early 20s. Well, I, unfortunately, we're far from that. So when we go from early 20s, now I'm in my middle ages, I guess, and I'm trying to hold on to as much as I possibly can, because it stated after 50, then we start to really lose that balance that you were just talking about, you know, everything from the resorption to the formation, that balance starts to break down and then we're not reforming new bone. We just start, unfortunately, having more crevices in the bone and that's what causes it to become weaker. And so I think over time, if you if you were to say, what did you do right? I think I listened to my parents. I took vitamins. I was active. I didn't sit down playing video games. I was out and about and, and movement. We've talked about the importance of movement and movement is medicine. And I think it stands true to this day. And we're seeing it still on the, the top tw the trends is movement is medicine, where we actually did a podcast on Random Fit about that. And I don't know. What about you, Ken? Did you do anything different? <laughs> I was the I was the same as you, Wendy. It was, when it came to milk, my I just remember growing up. My dad would, when he'd go to the grocery store once, sometimes maybe twice a week, he would come home with four gallons, maybe sometimes five gallons of milk. And we were a big milk family. And tell you what, by the end of the week, between me and my two younger brothers that milk would be done it would be gone um but at that time too we were also we're also at a time where you do your homework and you go outside and you play so we were active we were we were outside we didn't really have organized sports where we grew up or we actually we weren't woven into that culture but we were always outside so we spent a lot of calories for one but calcium intake was not at a shortage with us just because of how much milk that we drank but now now that i have a daughter i didn't grow up with a sister or anything in my house but with my daughter her pediatrician has said she needs to take calcium supplements because she's not a big milk drinker she doesn't drink multiple glasses a day like i used to so she's not a big cereal eater so she didn't doesn't get the milk in there she doesn't drink milk as a standalone so calcium was a big recommendation, something that is now a part of her daily routine when she um, she has her breakfast. She has her calcium. She has her vitamin D3. She has whatever breakfast that she has for that day. But the the other thing about, you know, just speaking from my own personal experience is that she's pretty much a water baby. She's she swam and she plays water polo. So those are two sports that are not weight bearing. So don't think I didn't think about that when she's like, oh, I'm going to swim or I'm going to play water polo. But now that she's expanded her interests into playing volleyball, the running, the jumping, basically everything you would do it on a volleyball court. Now that's a part of her, I guess, her sports collage, if you will. But taking a break from the water sports and 
doing more land-based sports. That's something I'm I'm really happy about just from the standpoint. Now she's getting that impact. She's 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 reacting, she's stepping, she's squatting. If you, if you watch volleyball, there's a lot of static squatting. So there's a lot of tension coming through the lower body from that standpoint. And then now there's jumping. She's learning jump serves. And if she's up front, she's got to try to block, which she doesn't do all that often. But it's it's the impact that I'm really looking at when it comes to uh, to my daughter. My son, he drinks milk. He plays a sport. He plays basketball. He plays baseball. So he's getting a lot of the running, the sprinting. He's He's a little young yet to get on any kind of formal training program, especially because he spends so much time running and being outside with those sports. But two different kids, two different situations, especially based on their activity of choice, but also their nutritional habits and their preferences. My son, he drinks milk all day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, he eats cereal, and he'll, you know, she'll, he'll have it all day long. So I'm, I'm not worried about his calcium intake. Yeah, my son loves cereal, but he likes the dry cereal. So he does not put milk in his cereal. However, every night at dinner, it is a no questions asked. We all drink milk. I mean, I still drink whole milk to this day, which my husband, when I first met him, did not. Now he partakes in that. And when you look at the risk factors, who's at a higher risk? We're, I'm fortunate. Can you have, have a son? I mean, I know you have a daughter as well, but I have a son. And then you're looking at it, of course, as women age, we go, you know, postmenopausal women, they're at a greater risk. Women in general are more prone because we're smaller. So our bones are thinner to begin with. And then that drop in estrogen when menopause happens, that obviously is something that can accelerate osteo, well, osteopenia is usually when it starts into osteoporosis. Of course, genetics, unfortunately, genetics plays a, a huge role in that as well. But your nutrition, and you had said that, you know, what is, what are you eating? What am I eating? If you have a higher protein diet, you have a better chance of not developing this at a younger age. Obviously, you want something that's high in calcium. You want to increase your vitamin D. And can you and I both read research all the time and you look at those numbers for vitamin D and you'll see that more and more people are lacking vitamin D. And I know every time I go in and do my my checkups and I get my blood work done and everything, that's one of the first things that I, I will look at. I'll look at some of these numbers and I take supplements for vitamin D and therefore a, a small point in time, I wasn't as active. I wasn't outdoors. I wasn't getting the sun. And because I was indoors more and I wasn't as strict in my eating, my vitamin D levels dropped and they dropped quick. And so, you know, when we're looking at this, can it be reversed? Osteoporosis can't necessarily be reversed. It can help be prevented of getting worse. That's one of the things that, that we try to emphasize but I had a client that came in and she was in her 50s and she had just gotten um, a report saying that she had osteopenia and she was just beside herself because she was always active. And can we put her, she came three days a week. We put her through a workout where I had her lifting heavy. I mean, granted, we went through the, the OPT model. We looked at our stabilization, strength and power, put her through the right exercises. But I was having her do things that I couldn't even do towards the end. And then when she went back in to get her physical and had a bone scan, those numbers were, it, it was like she was no longer in the osteopenia category. She was out of it. And they're like, whatever you're doing, you keep doing. But she was very cautious of what she ate. She started really increasing calcium and vitamin D. Her protein intake increased. She was really focused on her workout regimen. And if you're in, in the osteopenia category, which is what happens right before you get full-blown osteoporosis, it can be reversed. Now, osteoporosis, again, is something that happens with age long-term. You know, are you going to get it? Maybe, but there are a lot of preventative ways <laughs> that you can slow it down. And number one is exercise and number two is diet or vice versa, whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> they, they both go hand in hand. They so, do. Yeah. Before we get into how I would approach it, I just want to let you guys know that this episode of Random Fit is brought to you by NASM One, the membership for trainers and coaches. 
Members enjoy unlimited access to hundreds of career resources. Get the Edge app to schedule and program clients. Enjoy half off all certifications and specializations. Access free CEUs and more. All this for just $35 a month. Go to nasm.org backslash membership to learn more about NASM One. So, Wendy, when you talk about exercise and nutrition, I I don't like to, and this is, a, it's funny we're talking about this now because this is a conversation I just had with a client. It's not that one is more important than the other. One doesn't happen without the other is, is basically how I said it to my clients. So you can have the exercise, but if you don't have the nutrition to go along with it, it doesn't, re- I mean, the exercise always matters. It's just not going to be as impactful. So on the topic of osteoporosis, osteoporosis and preventing uh, further degradation of your bone density, you, you need you need the nutrition to support the activity, and you need the active activity to actually take the reap the benefits of the nutrition. Like you said, I if I have the calcium, if I have the D three, there's only so much my body's going to do with it. But if I don't give it the stimulus, the body, the stimulus, the weight bearing exercises to actually use it, then it's just it's just nutrition, right? It's just it's it's going to go in and it's going to go out. So the conversation I had with my client is that you can you can have the D3, you can have the calcium supplements, but you have to have the resistance training. So here she is. She's trying to, I don't say argue with me about the intensity of the workout, but when when the topic of osteoporosis comes up, you have to force the body to, to go against resistance, especially heavy resistance. And that's what we're talking about is to force the muscles to put tension on the tendons. And when the tendons pull on the bones, that's when the bones say, oh, okay, somebody's pulling on me, right? And it's talking about the tendons. Something's pulling on me. I have to I have to be able to counter this pull. So what does it have to do? It has to strengthen. It has to build up some density. So it's with that increased density of, well, it's with resistance training is what gives the body the the need to increase its density. And as we started, as you started to mention, Wendy, it's just heavy weights. And that's something that within our culture, we just don't do. We haven't done. It has, it's been about the high intensity interval training. It's been about cardio. So this is the shift in the mindset that we have to have when it comes to, we have a specific purpose, which is increasing bone density. So we have to have a specific strategy when it comes to a resistance training program. So lifting heavy is is a number one when it comes to trying to change bone density. Well, and it's interesting because I wrote a chapter and ASM has a a course and it was called senior course. At one point, we changed it to active older adults, because if someone we're not looking at age anymore, we've talked multiple times about age is just a number. But where are you within that that number? Where do you stand? Are you an active older adult or are you an older, older adult? Meaning that if you're, you know, 60 do you act like you're still in your forties or are you 60 and you act like you're 80 because you don't do anything. And I think that's where, when you're talking about the mind shift, we have to look at how does the body move? That's why we do assessments. And then if somebody can control whatever weight they're doing, then you need to increase the weight, no matter what someone's age is. And one of the the main focuses of the chapter was if somebody can do it and they do it without compensation, then it's ideal. And so it's not about, oh, they're older, so I don't want to have them lift heavy. You want them to be able to lift what they can control. And if they can lift heavy, that's actually going to help them. And and that's, I think, what where we get scared. Oh, they're older, so we don't want them to lift heavy. Oh, we're older, we don't want them to, to fall, so we don't want to do balance. And we have to get out of that mindset. We need to challenge them in every way possible. But if you have a well-rounded, integrated program, and somebody wants to maintain activity and do activities of daily living without being put into some sort of assisted living because they can't do their everyday activities, then we have to make the mind shift of how can we get them there safely, effectively, and efficiently. And to your point, in order to 
help someone with falls, we need to focus on balance. And as the bones become more brittle, that's going to be even more crucial. So having good flexibility, have good range of motion at a joint, having the strength to stand up out of a chair without falling over or step over a curb without taking a fall, that those are all important preventative things that you can work on as a trainer. If you are personally a, a fitness enthusiast and you're aging, things that you want to start now, because that is going to be something I mean, I have a, a, an aunt that's 86 and she goes, I've talked about her multiple times, but she goes to a dance class every day. She goes to her senior class, which is where they sit down and they do exercises in chairs because some of them are super elderly. She's very active. She still does her own lawn work. She lives by herself. She does a bunch of, she's very active in her community and in her church. And so it's interesting to see the, the perspective that she has. She's like, I don't want to be that person that needs someone to have to take care of me. I should be able to do this myself. And also having that mentality, I think, is something that is extremely important. But she walks all the time. She lifts weights. She goes to exercise classes and she does fun things that are going to help her bones. Even though two years ago she called me saying that her bone density has decreased. Well, she's 86. <laughs> it's like, well, that's yeah. just aging. But what are we going to do to prevent that? And they wanted to put her on medication she, because she's still super active and she's always been. And it's like at that point, if a doctor's recommending it, you have to ask all the questions. Is it for you? Because sometimes it's just the inevitable. However, if there are things that you can do to help with that medication and or maybe not even have to get on it because you can increase your activity, that's going to be something up to you, your doctor, your family to decide. But it is it's amazing to watch her because I always say and make a joke, you will outlive me because she she is she still drives. She still does. I'm not saying that's always smart, but she <laughs> I mean, she's super active and can I don't even see her being her age. Well, that's great. That's uh, that's how I want to be when I'm 80 plus years old. I want to be independent, lifting things. And when you when you when you look at what she's if she's taking care of her own lawn, she's taking care of herself. I mean, think about it. The a gallon of water weighs what? When eight pounds. And if I want to lift up my own pitcher of water or a gallon of milk, you have to be able to lift eight pounds. That's for a lot of people that can start to get a little heavier and heavier and heavier for every five, 10 years that you're around. So just the resistance training, the strength alone to be able to perform those, those activities. But when we talk about exercise and I just, just for clarification, I know that I said that I want my clients to lift heavy or my clients do lift heavy, especially I've got a few clients now they came to me because of fear of, you know, they're watching their, their mothers and their aunts get older. So these clients I'm talking about, they're in their early 50s or their late 40s, but they're watching their 80, 70 plus year old mother or aunt as they're going through the aging process and they're seeing them and they don't want to go through the same thing. Not just from the strength standpoint, but when you get those medical reports back and they show this is their blood profile, this is where they are. Um, with their bone densities and they say, okay, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to be my mother's age or my aunt's age. And then this is, these are the things that I'm looking at when I get my reports back. So just so we're clear, I know I said we, we lift heavy, but there is a process. You have to graduate from, first of all, can you control your body? Then you, can you control yourself with resistance? And then can you control yourself with progressive resistance and then can you move quickly with some power and speed and it's those latter two components moving with speed right that produces tension in the muscles and the and muscles pulling on the bones but also actually carrying heavy things so that takes time i'm not gonna even though someone says to me i'm afraid of this and i don't want my bones to break and i've got a strong family history of osteoporosis even though they may walk in knowing what they want, and I, and I agree with them 100%, there's still a six, two month, six week, two month process for me to get them to where, okay, now we are solidly lifting 
heavier weights because we have to have the stability first. We have to have the endurance first because to lift all that weight for the amount of time that you're going to lift it, you have to have a certain level of endurance to hold on to a weight or a dumbbell because when you think about some of the exercises that you can do immediately, you just have to kind of grade it is carries, right? Dumbbell carries, um, a bottoms up kettlebell press. So now we're working on grip strength. I'm pressing a, a kettlebell upside down. So the, the, the ball is above my wrist and my wrist is above my elbow and I'm pressing up. So I'm, I'm working on some grip strength. I'm working on some upper body strength with which everybody, not just male or female, but you know, upper body strength is a big part of, of building overall strength. So rucking we did an episode on rucking and the benefits of rucking so if your spine like you said wendy somebody qualifies they've gone through the screening they they are stable their spine can take they, their spine can handle it i'll put some weight on their on their back so that they're actually low axially loading they're actually loading the spine with some weight so it takes time you want to get there but you have to be smart you need to be progressive when it comes to starting somebody off to get them to where they're working out hard enough heavy enough to make a change in their in their bone density 100 percent. and today lifting your way to better bone health that's what myself wendy bats and ken miller are talking about here on random fit and ken i think it's important like what you said you want to try to find balance. We're trying to find balance within our bones, right? We're trying to think about resorption and formation over time. We start to lose that. So when you're looking at what we can do to help maintain what we have based on our ages. So if you're in your early 20s, that's your peak. Lift heavy, drink your calcium, take your vitamin D, stay active in your mid, mid ages. Uh, whatever you term that to be, that's where we find and hopefully maintain as much balance as possible. But over 50, that's when we start to see changes happen. Unfortunately, not always for the best because of lack of estrogen, testosterone in men. And that's where we start to see some of the issues. But if you're looking all in all at a program, then what is a sample program? What should someone do if they have osteoporosis? Well, I would tell you if you are not seeking a trainer or somebody that has a background in exercise science and understands the physiology and biomechanics of, of the body and movement, you should. And it's because maybe at this point in time, they're going to help you live an active life longer than maybe you would if you're on your own. However, if you're already doing that, but you want to think of what's what's something that I can do with my elderly family member, whoever that may be, start them out at going for a brisk walk. Walking is going to help. That's going to help stimulate, obviously, the muscles. It's going to start getting more movement within the joints. We're working on range of motion. You know, do body weight exercises at home. Ken, you talked about some of the stuff about just even lifting gallons of water or milk or, or little things that you can do. You know, the next day, maybe start to add some of the resistance training. Look at what do you have around the house if you're not going to a gym? If you're not going to a gym, why do you not want to be at a gym? Are there things that you can do within your house where you're ordering bands or dumbbells, but you need to add some load onto whatever you're doing on the day to day? Maybe the next day you could do the low impact. That's where my aunt goes to the dance class, which I find awesome. Or like you said, maybe that's where you go for a hike. You just do something different. And then go back to the walk the next day, add some balance work in there. Because if you start to look at the statistics with osteoporosis, the, the major areas of injury are going to be number one, the hip. How many times have you heard the hip? And unfortunately, if you break a hip, the longevity of your life starts to go on the decline, especially as you're older. Wrists are a big one. I know people that have broken multiple wrists and when they fall, they hit their shoulder. That's obviously a big issue. Um, you know, and then of course the, the foot and ankle. And then when that happens, you're down and out because you only have one leg at that point. And so you get the other one healed and ready to go. So I think, think the biggest thing is, is looking at, you know, yoga classes, they don't have to be this high intensity, crazy hit class that you're always seeing, but movement is medicine. The more you move, the better you're going to feel. And let's help our elderly population and ourselves as we grow older to hopefully decrease the chances of either getting osteoporosis or having it at an earlier stage in life when it could have been prevented. Yeah. And when it comes to all that, Wendy, the, the big, 
the, the main takeaway I have for my clients who are in their 40s and their 50s, you can't go back to your 20s. You can't go back to 15 years old to where you can drink and exercise and lift and just play and do all the things your bones need to be the be the bones you want them to be when you're 80. It's You just can't do that. But the next best thing is, are we looking at con consistency? And, and you brought it up when you doing a little something every day, not just the one day a week when you see me, when my clients are coming in for their training sessions, maybe twice a week. It's what you're doing in between sessions. So if they're, even if it's going for the walk, they, they discount the, the impact of their foot on the ground. So if you're going for a walk, that is impact. If you're doing jump rope, who cares whether or not you can string together 200 jumps in a row before you the rope hits your foot? Who cares? It's the jumping. It's the pacing. You're actually leaving the ground. That's that those little bouts of exposure when it comes to impact and stress on the muscles and the bones. So like you said, when it doesn't have to be this big lifting session, it's just <laughs> something every day, something every day that you can do to put tension into the body. But Tai Chi, even yoga. Again, we have to keep the muscles pliable. So that feeds into the whole system. So if you do something every day, whether it's a walk, climb up the stairs, body weight lunges, push ups, put tension in the body, that's what's going to help you get closer to where you want to be when it comes to keeping, maintaining uh, bone density. Because if you're not in your 20s, there's not going to do much about it as far as building goes. But we can keep what we what we earn and you earn it through lifting. So thanks, Wendy, for sharing your insight and, and your and your personal history there when it comes to lifting your way to better bone health. So for those of you listening to both Wendy Batts and I, Ken Miller here on Random Fit, thank you so much for taking this time to, to listen to what we have to share, especially when it comes to the different topics that we offer on Random Fit. So if you like what you heard today, like, follow, subscribe, download, share, rate us five out of five if you can. We'd really appreciate that. But more importantly, let us know what you want us to talk about and we'll get it on the Random Fit episode sometime in the near future. So until next time, everybody, take care and be well.